To better understand cryptocurrencies, blockchain, and bitcoins, now we are going to go back in time and try and understand evolution of money or where money came from, from way back because I tend to believe that uh, money has been evolving over time. And if you go back uh, in the olden days of our forefathers, they used to do trade using something we call better trade. If you go now, check how money has been evolving because I'm gonna teach you in the simplest layman's language today what cryptocurrencies are and uh, what they really stand for in the current trends in the marketplace. And uh, as I said, when you go back to our forefathers, they used to use what you call butter trade, which was basically exchanging value using goods uh, and services or animals when they met in the marketplace. A very popular way of trading in the marketplace still used today in some places or some instances but was not so convenient because uh, when you're doing butter trade there was always need for that medium of trade because everybody has to exchange what they have for a value somewhere uh, what do I mean uh, supposing you came to the marketplace very early in the morning or in the market, not in the marketplace, now in the market with your cows and you're expecting to go home with goats. The person who came with goats expecting to go home with camels. It becomes very difficult for everybody to go home happy if they we are not exchanging these goods and services against a third medium of trade. So that is when the gold standard was created. So when you look at the gold standard, basically, goal number one, what you can learn from gold is that it's a natural resource found out there organically on the ground. So if you have it, good for you. If you don't have it, buy it from your neighbor or go mine it. But one of the common characteristics that makes gold unique is that it is very limited in supply in that you cannot duplicate or multiply gold it's limited in supply everybody finds value in it so price goes up and that is one of the basic uh, economic principles that you're going to be learning as you go on that nothing has intrinsic value value is always created by demand and supply and when supply of something is limited and demand is high then price definitely has to go high so what happens is Gold was again inconveniencing in that you cannot break it down to use small units of trade. What do I mean? Like you can go sit in a restaurant and buy a cup of tea using gold bus. So what they said, why don't we then use gold as a standard of uh, like a measure of, of, of wealth? To be honest, I think countries way back used to use gold uh, uh, as, a, as a way to establish how wealthy a country is. So it was used as a store of value. So what they did, the national treasury would keep the gold that they had, but now they would create transactional targets that were pegged to this gold standard. And by that I mean they created metal coins and the paper currencies as we know them. But now the, the trick was this, because this is a man-made currency, so you can print paper however fast or much you deem fit. They had to come up with a mechanism to control how much they make because if it was not controlled then over time you will find that it will lose value, de de depreciate over time. So ideally, the idea was to have gold tied to how many uh, papers or coins that you make. And uh, this arrangement went on for a very long period of time until 1971. We all know dollar controls the world when you talk about fiat currencies. Uh, the president by then in the US I think was Richard Nixon. and. Uh, this guy is the guy who broke the marriage between paper and gold. But it was a brilliant idea that if a country has X amount of gold in the reserve, then you can only print X amount of paper. But when these two are untied, then that means every country will only print paper however much they deem fit, now depending on the management or depending on the leadership of that country. Now we do know from 1970, the rules changed and every country has been printing their money however they deem fit. And what this means is that if you wake up and find yourself in Zimbabwe, okay, <laughs> you understand different countries, different paper, or their country has different value. Some are way devalued because they've printed much more, but generally paper money has been losing value. And that is where now the contrast comes in because I've been asking somebody when the system or the government sell you the model, go to school, work hard, get a good grade and find a good job. Um, how do you tell me to be saving my money alongside my career for around 40 years and after retirement you'll give me back my money? And the dollar bill I saved back 40 years ago, what it would do in the marketplace 40 years later when they give it back to you, can't really do much anyway. 
We're just talking about advantages and disadvantages of money, but uh, sticking in mind that we're just discussing evolution of money because money has been evolving. So we came from barter trade, we went to the gold standard, created metal coins. Then uh, during that industrial revolution, they created um, these fiat currencies. Then way later, the banking system came. And uh, when the banking system came, uh, they created what you call MasterCards, Visa cards, all those cards that you can go put your paper in uh, the banking hall and you're given a card and told that the paper you put in there is in your. So this was what came after. And then I think in the 90s, we saw the rise of the internet. And uh, with the internet, now money became more cashless and started evolving into more digital forms. Because in the West, we were able to see the likes of PayPal, Western Unions, MoneyGrams and all that. In Africa, Kenya, we have a great innovation called M-Pesa, which is basically sending electronic me messages to each other. And uh, the creator of those messages or the person who allows those messages to fly ar around is the controller of that ecosystem. So basically, one thing that we can learn about all this evolution is that, number one, when you used to have better trade, control was more with uh, the consumers, like the people who are trading are the ones who used to give whatever you, you, you're trading value based on demand and supply, same for gold. But along the way, somewhere in here, we had the centralized system of government where governments have been controlling what money is in the marketplace or how we perceive money. And basically what we can learn is that money is not what government calls legal tender. Money is any unit of trade that we can all agree can be used as a medium of trade. So that's why we are saying the person who created cryptocurrencies was just thinking to themselves, now that these currencies that we are using, whether virtual or real paper, uh, somebody is controlling from a central authority, the central gov government and central banks, why don't we have money where the power of the money belongs to the people? And that is cryptocurrencies for you. So in my view, if somebody asked you what cryptocurrencies are, number one is the latest version of money as you can see it in the simplest layman's language. Then number two, it is uh, for me, it is like a digital gold. It's coming to restore the beauty that we lost around here. I guess that is why the colors are almost similar on my picture because cryptocurrencies are limited in supply in nature and uh, due to that if more people would adopt that concept then they gain value over time. So if you are to be asked what are cryptocurrencies, latest version of money because money has been evolving over time.